welcome to Wednesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic on a roasting hot day here in the UK. We've got weather warnings of all things due to the heat uh, and I'm recording this at half past one in the afternoon which is probably not a sensible thing to do um, but I have got a very special puzzle for you from the well basically the king of Sudokus. This is called Super King and it's by Ard van der Wetering from the Netherlands and Ard, Ard's puzzles are I think undoubtedly the most viewed Sudoku puzzles in the world. Um, just on our channel uh, his puzzles have amassed over 10 million views which is quite quite stunning always with these sort of elegant setups as we have here and just masterful solution paths um, and this one this one's got a weird rule set I've never seen this rule set before um, but I've no doubt it will be another miniature masterpiece from the great man and I'll read you those rules in just a second or two uh, a couple of things to mention first we are closing in on 500,000 subscribers we are not far away we've put on about a thousand over the last couple of days to reach 494,000 now so it is possible we're going to get to 500,000 fairly soon uh, which would be absolutely incredible. Uh, thank you so much if you're one of those subscribers. Um, what we're trying to do at the moment is to, to say thank you. Um, so we've got our book available. This is our book, Cracking the Cryptic Greatest Hits. It is fabulous. I will try and show you using the webcam. I do not know if that will work. Um, but we have a coupon code, a special coupon code, which is, I think it's 500 subs. But do check. It's in the video description. And there's a link to, to, to where you can still buy the book. We only have a few copies left. So if you do want to get hold of our book um, and it's biographical information, information it's uh, what else has it got fridge magnets I think it's all sorts of things in there as well as magnificent Sudoku puzzles um, then you can still get a copy at the moment uh, and now with a discount uh, and the other thing we're doing of course uh, we're gearing up to this uh, if we do hit 500,000 subscribers we are going to release a completely free app uh, full of handcrafted Sudoku puzzles um, by some of the magnificent setters that you will know and love on the channel. So um, I'm just going to try and name some of them. So Fistum of Bell, Codec, Clover, Jovial, um, Sam Kappelman Lines, Shy. Uh, and I heard yesterday uh, or the day before from Zeta Math, from Toolcap, Mr. Menace, uh, this morning from Jay Dyer, from Piotr V, Ictus. I mean, the, the list goes on. It is going to be absolutely epic. It's going to be completely free. So if you fancy a free Sudoku app, and you're not subscribed well if you fancy the free sudoku app and you're not subscribed do subscribe because it's coming soon um, now the only other thing i've got to mention is birthdays there are loads of birthdays for some reason on the 10th of august for people connected with the channel so happy birthday to jake from your partner tyler to joe from your friend zoe uh, joe i think you introduced zoe to crack and cryptic well done joe um melissa from your boyfriend marcus um, I think the two of you have started um, cracking some of the easier puzzles. I don't know how hard this one will be. Ard's puzzles are a real mixture. Some of them can be very approachable. Some of them could be quite tricky. So um, maybe look at the video length before attempting this one. Um, Phil, you've turned 56 today. Your wife Vicky told us this. And rather amusingly, she, she said, Phil does puzzles all day. Uh, and it's kind of annoying since he's not retired. <laughs> Um, and Tim Dorr, one of our biggest Patreon supporters. Tim, thank you so much for the support you give the channel. And you have turned 40 today. Absolutely brilliant. So I hope all of you are having lots and lots of cake. And I hope the weather is not as hot there as it is here. Anyway, that's said and done. Let's get on with Super King. I'll read you the rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits cannot repeat on a main diagonal marked in blue. So this diagonal has to have the digits one to nine once each, and that diagonal has to have the digits one to nine once each. Um, and the only other rule is the following. Digits in two cells, which are diagonal neighbors, must be at least two apart. So let's look at that cell. Uh, these would be the two, oh, I suppose, and those, actually. I was, I was thinking the diagonal neighbors needed to be outside the box, but I guess they don't. So these four cells are the diagonal neighbors. So if we make that cell a three. These cells have to be not four and not two, which is weird, isn't it? Oh, and I suppose not three, actually, because these two could be three. Okay, so these 
cannot be twos, threes, or fours. And these, obviously, they can't be threes by Sudoku, but these, those can't be twos or fours because they wouldn't be at least two apart from three. So that's how the rule works. Very simple rule, but quite weird. I've certainly not seen this rule before. Do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And we've got six given digits today. Very kind of odd. I think the last couple of puzzles I've done by odd have been, I want to say, four given digits. That was the enormous video and two given digits. Um, so it looks like we've got something going on with highish digits at the bottom, doesn't it? So six in this box can't go in the diagonal cells because obviously six is not too different from six. Okay, so six has got to be in one of those cells. Seven, we've got... Oh, that's it. Right, here we go. So seven, look, this little seven up here, I should have seen this immediately, but didn't. Uh, they, they operate together by Sudoku to force the seven in this box to be in one of those three positions. But remember this weird diagonal rule. We can't put a seven diagonally adjacent to a six. So the seven must go here, which pushes the six over. Oh, and look, and we can play seven in box nine now because it can't be diagonally adjacent to itself. So that's a seven. And so far, so good. So far, this might actually be one of those that Marcus and Melissa should be attempting for sure. Um, eight in this box, look. As Maverick flies over. I watched the original Top Gun the other day in preparation, hopefully, for going to go into the cinema to watch uh, the follow-up. Um, yeah, it's a good film. Now, eight in this box, maybe? It cannot go diagonally adjacent to seven. Mm, no, okay, so I think it's got three possible positions. Are we desperate enough to notate that? Yes, we are. Okay. Uh, no, I was about to say something nonsensical. I was about, whoa. No, okay, seven, seven in box four has to be in one of those three positions. Now we're, now we're highlighting cells that can have, or highlighting digits in three different positions, we might be able to do some more pencil marking. Seven on the uh, negative diagonal here has no, is not able to go in those six cells, so it must be in one of these two positions. So where does it go on the other diagonal? Oh. Okay. So that's interesting isn't it so oh it is that's beautiful that's not just interesting it's beautiful because what i hadn't appreciated was these sevens ruling out those two squares and the eight ruling out this square so the seven on the positive diagonal cannot go in those six cells therefore it must be in one of those three and at the same time it must be in one of these three so it is in the middle so we get a seven in the center of the grid now that might do some work, look. So seven is in one of two places in box two. Seven is, how about this box? Can we, oh, that's strange. Okay, so where does seven go in box six? It can't go diagonally adjacent to an eight and it can't go diagonally adjacent to itself. So it goes here and that's gonna get me the seven in box four by Sudoku and the eight in box six because our pencil marked eights which were in these two cells we eliminated this one by plonking a seven in it so now seven seven can be placed in box three because it can't repeat on the diagonal so it must go at the top and i want to say all the sevens are done and indeed they are right this this i think is one of ard's more approachable puzzles but that it's no less beautiful for that is it? it's absolutely gorgeous so now we've got eight now, <laughs> eight can't go in a diagonal cell adjacent to seven. So eight can't go in those positions. So eight is in two positions in box five, which knocks it out of that cell in box eight. So eight, eight is placed, oh, this, is, this is lovely actually. Eight is placed in box seven because it cannot be diagonally adjacent to seven. So I think it's only got one cell left which is that doing oh i see yes okay now let's look at this diagonal and wonder about eights 
because it's not on the diagonal here and it's not on the diagonal here so it needs to be there exactly which means 8 is in one of these two cells in box no it's not there's an 8 looking up there so this is 8 this is 8 and 8 must be here in box 4 and here in box 5 for a completion of 8s. So we've now done 7s and 8s and the choice is obviously going to be do we look at 6s or 9s next? We have a given 6 so maybe 6s are going to be better because we're never going to be able to put 6 next to a diagonally adjacent to a 7 are we? I'm just trying to see if that immediately triggers something in my brain it's not doing um maybe six in this box six can't be diagonally adjacent to seven so six is in one of two positions no it's not it's in one position because there's a peeping seven here <laughs> looking in the i didn't spot that right so let's look at this box carefully and ask where six goes not here not diagonally adjacent to the seven there the peeping seven is looking at that cell so it can't go there either and that's what i didn't spot so now six can't be diagonally adjacent to itself oh this is so cute um now now i'm wondering about one of the diagonals maybe can we do better than this so let's just check this we've got peep oh we've got a peeping seven so the peeping seven that looked into this box also looks into this box, into box three. So we cannot put six anywhere, but on the diagonal, which feels, well that does, I can see that matters down here. I'm just, I'm just trying to check this because it's, these peeping digits are very easy for me at least to miss. Right, that can't be six, so that's got to be six. There's got to be a six down here. And it can't be next to the peeping seven again. So the six is now one of those two cells. Okay, and six in this box. It's it's the same sort of trick, isn't it? This seven is peeping in. This seven already sees that cell. So I think six is off the diagonal. It can go next to eight, so that's all right. Oh, it can't go here. Sorry, look, there's a six down at the bottom of the grid. So six is in one of two cells, but crucially on this diagonal, we need to find a home for it. And it's gonna to have to be down in box nine and in the corner. So that's six in the corner, which doesn't earn itself a song, but never mind. Now, six can't go here or here. So six is in one of two cells in box six. No, it's not. It's in one cell because there's another beeping seven. Oh, I'm so bad at spotting those. So that's six. That's six. And this is six. How many sixes? The answer. All of them. Okay, so now it's fives or nines. Do we have any? Yes, we have a five. I don't think we have any nines. So let's try fives. So five can't go next. Oh, this is nice. The peep We've got a peeping six. So where does five go in this box? It can't go there. Can't go here. And it can't go next to a six so it goes there so five is in one of these three it can't go diagonally adjacent to a six it can go diagonally adjacent to a seven though so i think that's not going to work what about five in box eight it can't be diagonally adjacent to a six so one of two places in this box it can't go diagonal oh okay that might be interesting so five can't go here by Sudoku and it can't go diagonally adjacent to the six. So it's not on the diagonal in this box. It's not there. It's not here because that's a diagonally adjacent to this six. So it's got, hang on, it's got this possible position and I want to say this possible position. Is there some reason one of these can't be a five? I don't know. I'm just going to highlight those two cells, though. I mean, the, this this does do some sort of trickery, doesn't it? Because that tells us this cell can no longer be a five. Because if that was a five, I don't think you could then, well, because you couldn't put fives in either green cells, either of the green cells, I don't think you could put five on this diagonal 
Yeah, that's a peeping six looking at this cell. That's a five and that's the six. Yeah, so that would, that's not able to be five anymore. That's not able to be five. That's not able to be five because of this six. So five is in one of three places in box two, which, right, so now the question I'm looking at is where does five, yes, I can do this. Where does five go in row two now? Because look, we can't put it in those three cells. We can't put it in these three cells. So it's in one of those two and there's a peeping six. So it goes here, which is beautiful. Yes, it is beautiful because now five on this diagonal has to be in the middle box and there's a six here peeping in there. So it goes there, which locks it out of this cell by the power of peeping. Um, it's in now one of that this domino, so it's not there. So it now gets placed in green. We can un unwind our green colouring. How many fives have we got? No, not that many yet. Ah, but five is in one of those two cells. No, it's not. There's one here. So five is there. And it can't be here. It would be diagonally adjacent to itself. Right, and that's cute because it's in one of these two cells. Now where it cannot be is there, because if that's a five, you know you can no longer put five in this box because it, we can't put five here by Sudoku and we can't put five next to five because it's, it's not two digits apart from it. So that cell is not five, that cell is five, that cell is five. How many fives have we done now? Maybe all of them, I think. Two, three, yes, we have. Okay, so now, well now it's a real choice. I'm tempted to go to nines now because it's nines and fours we know absolutely nothing about other than that they can't be next to the fives or the eights and we have all of those digits. So let's have a look at eights maybe. Eights, yeah, okay. That's a, that I could have done this before, I suspect. Or maybe not. Depends about this five. But where does nine get to go on the positive diagonal? It can't be next to an eight diagonally. And that cell is next to an eight diagonally. Oh, the, no, hang on, I'm wrong. I missed, I missed this digit. So nine has two possible positions, I think. Just double checking this. I think nine has two positions on that diagonal. What about the other diagonal? It can't go there. It would be next to eight. That one, that, that looks okay. So on this other diagonal, it can go here. It can't go here. Can it go there? Yes, can it go here? Yes, okay, sorry, right. I think this is, this is getting a bit tricky with nines. Right, so let's try nines, not from a diagonal perspective, but just from a, yeah. Okay, where does nine go in box seven? This eight rules out those three digits, so it's got to be in one of those two positions, which means it's in one of two positions in box, um, in box nine, neither of which sees a diagonal peeping eight. Um, okay, which of these other eights is really potent and powerful? That's the question I'm wondering. Maybe, no, well, maybe that one a bit. That knocks out those cells. So nine's in one of three positions in box two. No, there's an eight here beeping in. Two positions in box two. So, okay. Right, I'm gonna, I think, I'm, I think we're gonna have to go full ham and basically pencil mark everything that can be nine. So nine in box, Three, I think has three possibilities, which is nearly good, but not good enough. Can that be nine? Yeah, that's what purple meant, isn't it? That can be nine. What about nine in this box? It can't go there and it can't go here, look, because of this peeping eight. So it's only got three positions in box six. I'm not quite, I'm not, this isn't quite going well enough, is it? Ah, what about box five? Eight here rules out those. That eight rules out that one. So now, ah, here we go. So nine is vertical. It's in one of those two positions, neither of which sees a peeping eight, I don't think. 
In fact, that's really annoying. It doesn't do very much at all. Oh, I see. But 9 in box 4 can't go there because of this 8. So 9 in box 4 has to be in one of 4 positions. But that, that begs the question, where does 9 go in this row? And it can't go in any of those 6 cells. So it must go in these 2 cells and it doesn't go there. So we've got 9 down to 2 positions now in box 6. Um, and 9 in box 8, maybe I've not pencil marked that. It can't go in those two. So it's in one of three positions. Ah, it's suddenly got tricky. Maybe I should have looked at fours. That's the obvious conclusion I'm drawing from this. Um, bother, bother, bother. What about... Where have I not pencil marked nines? In this box. It can't go here. So all of those positions, I think, are available. Right. Hmm. Is there anything else we can do here that's going to be... Oh, there is. Of course there is. This pattern is interesting. It's the same as we had down here. That can't be a 9. Because if that's a 9, you could not have put a 9 in box 2 at all. That would be ruled out by Sudoku. That by the diagonal constraint. So that's not 9. Oh, this is good. This is good. Because now we can ask where 9 goes in column 7. Because it's not there. It's got to be in one of these two. And it can't be here because of this, not, of this 8. So that's 9. On the diagonal. So that's not 9. Which seems to mean that that's the, that's the 9 in the purple. Which is beautiful because it knocks the 9 out of the corner. Places the 9 here. Places the 9 here. And all of a sudden we're cooking with gas again. That's a 9. Um, 9 is not there. 9 is in fact there, look, by Sudoku. 9, nine is not in those cells. What about up here? 9 is not in those cells. So can we finish the 9s? Let's depurplify those digits and stare at the grid for a moment or two. Um, hmm. I've got, that's, that pencil mark comes out, that pencil mark comes out. I've got six nines placed. And all I've got to do is somehow resolve the nines in the first three columns. Ah, and I can because of that eight. Look, there we go. Has that been available all along? It probably has. You've probably all been shouting at me about it. But I have finally figured out all the nines. So I guess now we move to fours. Now, oh, four. Four in this box immediately looks a little interesting. It's got to go in one of two positions. Now that's interesting for threes. <laughs> because now you can't put threes in those cells. If you put a three in either of those, it will be diagonally adjacent to four. And that will break the puzzle. This might get easier. As the, as the puzzle goes on. So the three cannot be in those two. It must be in one of those two in the, this box. Now, okay, so we've got to be on the lookout for how fours interact with threes. Okay. Mm. Um, four. Four in which box should we go to now? I'm trying to see one that might be really... Oh, four in this box might be restricted. Can't go diagonally next. No, that's you. I was looking at orthogonally adjacent, not diagonally adjacent. So four is in one of those three. Ah, okay. So on this diagonal, where does four go? It's got, And it can't go there because it would be next to five. So I think the only place four can go is here. So that's nice. That puts four in one of these two cells, neither of which is diagonally adjacent to a five. It puts, what else does it do? Well, it restricts four a little bit in box eight to one of two places. Now let's look for peeping fives. <laughs> can't see any. Um, this can't be a four. So four is in one of three places in box seven. And four can't go there. So four is in one of three places, I think, in box three. That's a little interesting because again, now we, because we can't put four here, 
the four in this row must be in one of these three cells. Now it can't be there, that's got a peeping five. And it can't be there by Sudoku, good grief. So that's a four, which means that's a four. Oh, good grief, it's going again. That's a four. That's on the diagonal, so that's not a four up there. There's a four in these two, that's not a four. Um, keep going, how many, right, let's double click the fours and stare at them. Oh, there's a four here now. My Sudoku. It's a four in one of these. Can we use the diagonal? Probably. I need a five to be looking at one of these. I don't think it is. Oh, no. Um, hmm. Okay. Let's double click the fives for a moment and see if we can see them touching any of these fours. I mean, diagonally touching don't think so. Let's check the diagonals. Have we got anything? No, I don't see how to resolve that. Okay, maybe I have to use threes then. Because again, this trick that we did in box one, I can see it's repeatable here. Those can't be threes now. So the three must be in one of these two cells. Which means this cell look can't be three or four and must be one or two. Here, we can't put the three in these two cells. Yes, oh, that's it. So it's box six where it, all the magic happens. Yeah, that's really lovely. Yeah, because this can't be a three, how could either of these be threes? Oh no, hang on, it's diagonal. It, they can be. I'm talking absolute nonsense. I'm confusing myself. Um, no, these, this could be a three, four pair because it's diagonal fours that we need to be careful with. So, that's a one, two, three, triple, I've just noticed. That can't be a three because it's diagonal from a four. Oh, can I get the, can I get the three up here? It's in one of those two cells, so that's got to be a one or a two. I don't think I can. Um, I've got ones, twos, and threes everywhere here. I'm not sure if the idea is to pencil mark them or not and we need have I got the same yes I've got the same on this diagonal I just need one of these fours to do some more work come on I've got ones yeah it's ones twos and threes all over the place but none of these fours seem to be quite as good as they were as the other digits were behaving earlier on um, these this cell definitely can't be a three so the three is in one of those two cells, which means that that cell is not a three. So is that helpful? It might be. <laughs> I don't think so though. What we might have to do is to... No, actually I can't see how to do that. I was wondering if I could lock the three into exactly two positions on a diagonal. Ah, that cell. That's the cell that we need to look at. The th oh, this is it. In fact, I could have got this before. I just didn't spot it. So, this four sees that cell. That cannot be a three. So it's this box where the magic is. This is the three. So this is a one or a two. This knocks a three out of this cell, which places a three here. Which... Not, oh, I see it places a three on the other diagonal. It's just beautiful, isn't it? It really is. Now this can't be a three anymore. So that has to be three. That can't be three. I need to put a three on this diagonal. It's got to go in. And that's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. Um, that's okay. Oh, look, and I do have a three, four pair here. So this must be a one or a two. And we need something to disambiguate this. And oh, it's there. Look at this diet. This there's a three in one of those two. Why couldn't that be a three? Oh, because of the three on the diagonal. So now that's forced to be three. That's forced to be four. This cell has to be a four. And this has to be a one or a two because it can no longer be anything else. 
So this digit at the top is now four. This digit's a four. And we might be finishing off, I think. How many fours have we got now? All of them. How many threes have we got? Not quite. Oh, that can't be a three. It would be next to itself. So that's a three. That's a three. And that's all the threes done. And we're just left with ones and twos. And they're going to have to be disambiguated by the positions of the threes, I think. So let's look at this. Where is there a useful three? There. That cell is seeing that one. So that cannot be a two. And that's got to be a one. So that's a two. That's a one. And has that finished the puzzle? I want to say it might have done. Two, two, one, two, one. Um, have we got more stuff going on here? Do we need another bit of magic from a three? Yeah, that three sees that cell. So that fixes more digits, look. And that solves the puzzle. Absolutely wonderful, again, from Ard. Just delivers every single time. I mean, anybody who's tried that as their first Sudoku, I think it's doable. I really do. There was nothing actually that complicated. It was, it was a good scanning exercise, which is probably why I, I didn't excel. <laughs> but it also had some lovely logic in it, the way you could sort of lock different digits into certain rows and columns. And then, and well, especially the peeping digits, there were a variety, was it the peeping sevens and peeping sixes that uh, were misbehaving, but also allowing us to find the logic that led to the unique solution. So I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments. I do enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.